Hi, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. And in this video, we are going to create a 16-bit card game. In this video, we are going to use C# -sharp to create the movement. So, if you want to create this using Playmaker, click the button here. Okay, so I've prepared a couple of things here. First, I'm going to go to the folder here and inside the sprites, I've already had the card racer sprites and I'm going to provide the link in the description. This asset is courtesy to user Tito Petri from Sketchfab. It's a very nice 3D model and I convert this to a sprite using Blender. I also create a circuit texture like this and also going to provide this in the description. And I'm going to explain how we set up the scene here. So here, in the scene, I have a box or cube object scaled to 200 on the x-axis, 200 on the z-axis, and a very small value on the y-axis. And I also reposition the y-position so the surface exactly at the zero point of the y-axis. And for the shader, it's actually using an unlit shader texture, and I'm using this circuit texture here. And for the player, it's basically an empty game object. I put all of the player component under this game object here and there are two components the first one will be a spear and for the spear collider just add a spear collider and also a rigid body and i've set the mass for the rigid body to 200 and the angular direct to 0.02 and the other one would be a card an empty game object and under this card we have this sprite here and for the sprite i've created an animator here with a blend tree and I'm using a float parameter to drive this animation inside the blend tree. So if we select the card sprite here and select the blend tree, you'll see that if we adjust the value here, the sprite changes from each of the state here. So you'll need to create all of the animation here using the sprite. And basically the animations only consists one frame of each of the sprite here so for right one is actually this sprite here and the right two is this sprite here only one sprite on the animation and so forth the same goes with the left side and then i've put all of the animation that i've created here as a motion on our blend tree and set the value accordingly so the left animation or the left state should fill the range from zero to negative one and the right state should fill the range from 0 to 1. Okay, so yeah, this is basically how we set up the animation. And the other thing that we need to import is the standard asset here. Just import this and then make sure you import the camera component, the cross-platform input component, and also the editor for cross-platform input. Once you've import this asset, you can just go to the standard assets folder under the camera prefabs, just use the multi-purpose camera and drag it to the scene here. For the target, we can use the card object under the player here because we are going to move the spear to move the card and the card will follow the spear. So let's just drag the card as the target and I'm going to change the move speed to 15, turn speed to 30 and the roll speed to 5. And we can disable the follow tilt here. And now we've set up all of the game objects we need for the game. Let's create the behavior part. The basic concept of the card movement is that we are going to add force to a spear based on the card forward direction. And the card will follow the spear position. At the same time, we are also going to control the Y rotation of the card. And this will cause a change on the forward direction. Hence, this will also change the movement direction of the spear. This way, we will be able to steer and navigate the spear while adding force to it. Okay, so now let's create a new script. And let's just call this card controller. And let's open the script. And here inside the script, we need to define a couple of variables. So first, I'm going to create a new serialized field. And this will be a type of float. And we are going to create three variables. The first one will be the acceleration. The second one should be the gravity. And the third one will be the steering. And the next field that we need to add is the rigid body sphere. And we also need a reference to the animator 
of the sprite. So let's just add an animator and let's just call this sprite visual. And then we want to also create a private float variable. And this will be the speed and also current speed. And then I'm going to also create a new float for the rotation. Let's just call this rotate and then current rotation. We don't need the start method, so we can just safely delete this. And here inside the update method, we want to set the position of this card game object to always follow the sphere position. So we can just access the sphere rigid body here and then grab the transform component and then get the position. Now we want to handle the input and basically here, if we are holding the control one button, which is get button, and this will return true whenever the fire button is held down. And let's just pass fire one as the string argument. And whenever we press the fire button, we want to set the speed value to the acceleration value. And this will drive the current speed later. And we want to set the acceleration on the inspector so we can fine tune the behavior of the card. And then for the steering, we want to use the input get axis and the axis name should be horizontal. So this will detect for the right or the left keys on the keyboard or the A on or the D keys on the keyboard. And if this value is not zero, then we want to calculate the steering here. So first let's just create a new integer and this will be a direction. And we want to check for this value here. If horizontal is greater than zero, we want to set the value of the integer to one. But if it's less than zero, then we want to set this to negative one. And then we want to create a new float amount. And this would be the absolute value of our input get axis horizontal. So let's just type math f dot absolute function and then get the horizontal axis and this is basically will return 0 to 1 depending of the state of the button but it will be never a negative value because we are applying an absolute operation to the result of the input get access and then we want to pass both of this value to the steer method so let's just create a new steering method for it steer and this asks for direction and amount so let's just pass the integer direction and then the float amount and here inside the steering we basically want to modify the rotate variable using the steering value and then we want to multiply the steering value with the direction so we can have a positive value of the steering or the negative value of the steering depending on the direction that user is pressing whether it's right or left and then we want to also multiply this by amount so when the user doesn't press anything the amount will be zero and all of this formula will have a result of zero and then we want to run this method here inside this if statement so let's just type steer and then pass the direction and pass the amount for the animation we want to access the sprite visual animator and then we want to run the set float method and we want to pass to the horizontal parameter that we've already declared on the animator and then we want to pass the value of input get axis horizontal this will trigger the state of the animation whenever the card is turning and then for the acceleration we want to set the current speed to a value that we've calculated using a formula called mathf.smoothstep and we want to interpolate the value from the current speed to the speed value and for the interpolation value we want to set this to 12 but we need to multiply this with time dot delta time so the value will be consistent on different machines or the value will be time constraint instead of frame constraint and then after this line here we need to set the speed back to zero because on the next frame speed 
needs to be zero if we don't press anything. So we need to reset this. But if we press the fire, then speed will be the same value as the acceleration and the current speed will gradually increase again. And then we want to also set the current rotation to a formula, which is the mathf.lerp or linear interpolation. And we can just pass the current rotation to the rotate value. And for the interpolation value, let's set this to four and also multiply this with time dot delta time. And now let's set the rotate here back to zero. Okay, so now we've done with the input, we need to trigger the movement of the sphere rigid body in a fixed update method. So let's just create a new fix update method here. And basically we want to add a force to the sphere. So let's just run the add force method. And for the factor three force or the direction, we can just pass the transform forward of this card game object. And we want to multiply this with the current speed value. And for the force mode, let's set this to acceleration. And here below, we want to also apply the gravity to the force. So let's just add another add force method. And for the gravity, we can just use the factor three down and then we can just multiply this with the gravity value. And for the force mode, we want to set this to also acceleration. And now here we want to modify the rotation of the card. So let's just access the transform Euler angles. And we are going to use a factor three lerp to interpolate the previous rotation, which is the transform dot Euler angles to a new vector three. And for the X component, we're going to set this to zero. For the Y, we are going to grab the transform Euler angles dot Y, which is the previous Y rotation. But we want to add this with the current rotation. And for the Z, let's set this to zero also. And then I'm going to press enter here so we can see it better. And for the third argument, the interpolation value, we want to set this to five, multiply with the time dot delta time and save this. Okay, now we set up the script here. Let's go back to Unity. And let's add the script to the card game object. So right now I'm going to select the card game object and I'm going to add this card controller script. And let's set the acceleration to 55, the gravity to 20. You can tweak this value, of course. And for the steering, I'm going to set this to 15. And for the sphere rigid body, let's just drag the sphere game object to the slot here and it will automatically register the rigid body component. And for the sprite visual, let's just expand the card and then drag the card sprite here. And let's save this. And now let's give it a try. Now if I try to accelerate, you see it moves and we can also turn. And when we are turning, the turn animation is playing, as you can see here. So yeah, that is basically how we create a simple card motion mechanics and with a looks of a 16-bit card games. Thanks a lot for watching and if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for future videos. I'll see you in the next episode.